Ladies and gentlemen, we have more information about Ragnar Prime in Rise of Kingdoms, including when we might be able to get our hands on him, how we might get our hands on him, how his accessory works in his key story, when this key story is coming, and a lot more, including the new anniversary event that is now live in Rise of Kingdoms. So today we're going to go over all of that. But first, what's going on, guys? Cheers. Now, the other day when I first covered Ragnar Prime, this was breaking news that came from an in-person event in China. And so all of the information that I had in that video was translated from Chinese. And now we have all the information in English. And as far as the skills go, and you can see them up in the top over here, uh, everything in the skills is identical to what we thought. So there are no corrections that we need to make regarding the skills. But the number one thing that I do want to mention here is that in my video, I said that Ragnar SP could stand for special prime or secret prime or super prime or something like that. That is not the case. This is simply Ragnar prime. Okay. It says it right here. Prime Ragnar. That is it. There's no special. There's no secret. There's no super. It's just Ragnar prime. And in the Chinese version, they use SP to symbolize prime. Okay. In the international version, we use the P for them. They use the SP. It's the same thing. So this is nothing different that we've seen from any other prime commander in the game this is just Ragnar Prime. I want to make that very clear so that way there's no more miscommunication or misinformation. I did pin a comment on that video as soon as I found out, uh, but I just want to be very clear. This is Ragnar Prime and that is that now I'm still a little bit confused as to why we've got Ragnar prime uh historically we've only got upgrades from epic commanders to legendary and now in rise of kingdoms we have two legendary Ragnars which is going to be extremely confusing for new players we're going to talk about what we know about how you obtain Ragnar prime but I hope I hope and this is not official this is not mentioned by Lilith this is literally just this is my hope okay I hope that there's some way to convert regular Ragnar into Ragnar prime uh because otherwise having two legendaries with the same name like it literally is the same exact name it's just going to be super confusing for new players I don't know how that is going to work but anyway let's talk about when we might get our hands on this commander because that is definitely something that a lot of players have been wondering because we did just find out about the new archer commanders coming into the game and they should be landing in the game any moment now probably on the next wheel of fortune and mightiest governor they are already live in the chinese version of the game and so we know that they should be coming around october 8th which was my original prediction for them for a release cycle perspective that is 70 days since the last commanders that is the most average release cycle ever and so it was easy to predict but Ragnar Prime is a bit different right because this is an infantry commander and we know that the next release cycle for commanders is either going to be cavalry or it's going to be leadership with ranged at least historically that has been the case so how does infantry fit in there like he's he's obviously not going to be released alongside them uh we'll talk about that in just a minute but when he'll be coming is probably late October. If we scroll down here, this is the official Rise of Kingdoms YouTube channel. You'll see that the 2024 key KVK story is coming in late October. Okay. Late October is when we're going to get our hands on the new KVK key story. So if we're going to get our hands on this new key story in late October and Ragnar prime plays a, like he's basically the protagonist of this story. Well, then we know that he should land in the game around the time that this new KVK story arrives, right? That's just, it makes sense. Logically, they're not going to launch the KVK that is based around Ragnar prime without also releasing Ragnar prime in unless uh in the kbk everyone gets him just they just get him right that's totally possible and then he's released to everyone else later down the line in some other way that's possible as well it's also worth noting that the late October release date could be in reference to the Chinese version of the game right so it could be just like with these new Archer commanders it could be the case that the Chinese version of the game gets this new KVK story a little bit sooner than we do in the international version if that's the case then the international version will probably see this key KVK story sometime in November possibly uh, I can't imagine that it would be any later than that so yeah we are one to two months away from getting our hands on Ragnar Prime that is my prediction based on everything that we know from official sources then the question becomes how do we get our hands on Ragnar well it is 100 confirmed that this commander will not be part of a wheel of fortune 
or a mightiest governor okay so that is 100 confirmed you don't have to worry about that he will not be present in those ways which means he probably won't be part of a release cycle and i say probably because it is possible historically like in the case of margaret or in the case of gajamata that those commanders were part of a release window, right? They were part of sort of wheel and mightiest governor, but they were an extra event, right? And so if the next release cycle is a ranged leadership cycle, then what they could potentially do is put both ranged commanders, one on the wheel, one as mightiest governor, and then the third commander, which historically would be a leadership commander, they could instead do Ragnar Prime, and he would be available through some sort of event, like I said, similar to Gajamata or like Margaret, for example. Uh, that's the only way that I can see him fitting into a release window. Um, do I think they'll do that? I I don't know. It's possible. Lapu Lapu was kind of a was kind of a miss, right? People didn't really invest in him, and so they might be thinking, okay, well, maybe it's time that we phase out the leadership uh, as part of the cycle right and then they do this um it would just be a little bit unfair to do that because this is an infantry commander right and so infantry just got William Wallace and CPO Emilianus and then we got archers and then we're going to get what another infantry commander for season of conquest that would feel a little bit weird right so that's the only way that that wor would work also if he's coming with the release of this new KVK well we're not look we're not going to see the next uh you know release of commanders by the end of October right that's just not going to happen and so it would come later than that and again it would be weird for him to be launched after the KVK story that he's part of right so it, it is possible that he's part of the ranged cycle but I think it's unlikely based on everything else surrounding him I think it is very likely that he comes into the game in the same way that we got Lu Bu and the same way that we got Liu Che uh those commanders just came as a seven day event you log in for seven days and at the end of the seven days you unlock the commander and then afterwards uh we saw Liu Che come on the wheel maybe he'll show up on the wheel later down the line in like a year or something I really doubt that because they have said that he's not going to be part of it maybe he'll end up in the legendary tavern after that right like he's unlocked through the event then he goes to the legendary tavern that's possible as well it's also possible that he could be obtained through the special event seven day login thing and then afterwards he gets put in the expedition in replace of ethelfled or as a choice between him and ethelfled that is again just speculation there's no news about that i just feel like they've been doing a lot of updates to expedition lately it would make a lot of sense for them to do that it would make uh, you know a lot of players happy if they did that so that is possible as well all that we know officially is that ragnar prime will come from some sort of exclusive or special event initially okay he's also only going to be available in season of conquest so if you are in kv k3 or earlier you will not get access to ragnar prime you will only have access to ragnar in the gold keys which means this ragnar will not be in the gold keys right we know that for sure first of all there's already a ragnar there second of all gold keys are available for all kingdoms right and so if he's only available in season of conquest then he will not be available in the gold keys at least when he first comes out um it's possible that like it's regular ragnar for the first three kvks and then once you hit sock it changes to ragnar prime doubt it right i doubt it um but we'll, we'll have to wait and see i also want to make this clear one more time and i said this in the initial video but ragnar prime will be available in all game modes okay so he's not going to be exclusive to this new kvk story obviously he is the protagonist of this new kvk story and he gets a special accessory for this new kvk story but Ragnar Prime as a commander can be used in any KVK he can be used in home kingdom he can be used everywhere he is literally just a regular commander okay he is it's just Ragnar Prime he's just a new commander coming to the game the only difference is because he is a protagonist of this new key story he will get a special accessory in that key story which makes him function differently okay that's the only differentiator between him so far that we know speaking of the accessory let's talk about that for just a second because I do want to clarify what exactly this accessory does first of all this accessory does seem to be a kvk exclusive okay so you'll probably only be able to use this accessory on ragnar prime if you are in the king of all britain key kvk story okay so that's the only time you're probably going to be able to use this accessory on ragnar prime if we jump down to the description once again here it says ragnar prime makes his grand debut in this kvk so again i think he will come into the game at the time of this kvk and also governors will receive an exclusive accessory for ragnar prime that when equipped activates his skills across troop types when he is in the secondary commander position so a couple of very important key pieces of information there first of all it says governors will receive an exclusive accessory so that 
that to me sounds like when you go into this kvk you just get it that's i mean it says i mean that's the only logical conclusion that i can come to based on how they've worded it here perhaps it's worded poorly but by saying governors will receive will meaning there's no way not to um which means you'd have to just get it for free you will receive an exclusive accessory that's cool that's good to know i love to see that also uh it's only when he's the secondary commander now the reason that i was confused about this is because in this video you'll see ragnar standing in front of huo right which would imply that ragnar is the primary same thing here we have ragnar standing in front of Herman Prime. So for me, it was a little bit weird. Like, okay, the KVK is based around him. So he's the key protagonist. And in the images, he's standing in front of the other commander. So I thought maybe he has to be the primary commander. As it turns out, that is not true. He has to be the secondary commander in order for this key accessory to work in this KVK and to convert his skills to altered types. Now, it's also worth noting that based on how this is worded here, it sounds like the accessory simply makes him effectively a leadership commander, right? It essentially makes the skills work for any troop type. So it sounds like you could potentially do a mixed army and you would still be able to use this accessory and it would apply to all the troop types in your army. So one thing that people were talking about was maybe this is the pair for Trajan in the open field, right? You do Trajan as the primary Ragnar prime as the secondary for this game mode only. And you give him the special accessory. And now his skills work for all the troops that are in your army, which would be mixed because of Trajan. And there you go. You've got a great commander pairing right there. You've got a great use for Trajan in the field, and he's going to pop off with all of his uh, extra damage, which is going to be really cool. Plus it gives Trajan an AOE, which a lot of people like, because, you know, sometimes people, I think Cheskel talks about this, uh, using CPO prime as the secondary to Trajan to get CPO prime in the field. Uh, and also to give Trajan some AOE and some damage and some debuffs and things like that. This keeps that trend by giving AOE to Trajan. And I think that's cool. So yeah, it looks like we know this accessory will make his skills available for all troop types, not just a singular troop type. So in this example, and this was a little confusing again, I thought, okay, well, he'll just be converted to archers. No, I don't think that will be the case. I think it will just be his skills work for everyone all the time, no matter what. So that's awesome. Okay. Next let's talk about this new KVK key story, uh, because this is something that I touched on briefly in my last video, but now we have official English information. So we can go ahead and cover this. It looks like there are going to be four camps in this key story. It looks like two of these are going to be the Vikings, right? And it makes sense that there's a whole body of water here on the coast and the Vikings will land here and they'll land here. So they'll be attacking from two different different uh, angles basically this looks like king's land in the center here this is probably some sort of rough kvk map uh it looks like it's not a square which is very interesting historically kvk maps are squares um this does not appear to be a square so that's very exciting i wonder how that's going to work either way uh we have two viking factions and we have two anglo-saxon factions here the east anglia are vikings that have three percent infantry march speed and three percent rallied army damage the northumbria not sure if i'm pronouncing that right but they also get 3% infantry march speed and 3% all damage, which is very good. That just seems, they, they just seem better than the other faction, right? Like 3% all damage is just better than 3% rally damage. So I don't know why you would ever pick this one, right? I mean, you get all damage in rallies as well. So plus they both get infantry march speed. So yeah, it's also worth noting that the march speed here is very minor. It's like not not that much to be like a faction buff right here we have mercia the anglo-saxons this gives you three percent archer march speed and minus three percent damage received for your garrisons okay then we have wessex sorry if i mispronounced that but we have another three percent archer march speed and three percent troop damage in the field so this is exclusive to field damage it's not all damage so i don't know that seems a little bit unbalanced right like all damage for the vikings is better than field damage objectively uh, maybe there was a mistranslation here maybe this was meant to be field damage as well um who knows otherwise this seems like the best choice amongst all four the other thing that was revealed here is stratagems make a return here so we see stratagems in other kvks here we see a lot of the same ones i i don't it's been a while since i did a stratagem kvk so i don't remember all of them but some of these are definitely the same 
same uh, and I think actually a lot of these might be the same perhaps some of them will be unique to this specific key story uh or maybe they'll work a little bit differently maybe you can choose more of them I'm not really sure it looks like you still only get six though so yeah I, I, maybe it works exactly the same as in previous kvks next up we have burr rating so this looks really cool this is a feature that is present in other city building mobile strategy games of course this looks like you will literally be raiding a city on the map now we first saw this type of gameplay in i think grand cross age of titans we've since seen that in other types of games i think aoem is going to have this as well but it looks like each of the factions will probably have a burr that could be rated for resources and if we just play the video clip here you could see armies coming into the city and attacking this building here and there's also some different like pve content around you see there's uh some hospitals over here you see there's a city that has the uh imprison logo around it right so there's a lot to learn from this little clip here but it looks like you can attack each one of these buildings specifically and this is basically a whole new type of city siege which i think is very exciting i think it is about time that we get a new type of like city siege gameplay in rise of kingdoms so this is very exciting this uh looks exclusive to this kvk key story but perhaps they will expand it to other kvks in the future or maybe to home kingdoms who knows but this looks like the first sort of you know toe in the water just dipping it in testing the waters testing to see how this actually will work in rise of kingdoms i'm excited to see that also worth noting old graphics right we don't see the updated graphics here and they've been doing that a lot with these reveals they're revealing these new events they're revealing these new uh, you know things and they're all using the old graphics so like i'm wondering how long until we get the new graphics rolled out to the entire game we got the teaser over the summer we got the kvk over the summer um it feels like it's taken a long time i'm really like inching to get these upgraded graphics because they were just so beautiful in my previous kvk I, I just i why why are we still looking at this anyway i'm excited i'm excited for this i'm excited for this new gameplay 100 percent. this is a very good stuff we needed something like this and i'm really excited to see how this will work i think later in the video uh they show off this map and this looks like the four burrs we might see on the kvk map right so like we have this faction and this faction these are the vikings and then we have the anglo-saxons down here those are probably it's probably going to be the case that there will be four burrs for this entire map and you can raid and plunder the enemy birds who knows if it will be like at the end of kvk or maybe there will be certain like timed events where like you'll have a certain amount of time to raid it and you'll have to see how far and how much you can plunder who knows but i'm excited to see that and it looks like it will play a key factor in this kvk game mode which is exciting next up is home gang uh this i don't know if this is going to be exclusive to the kvk or not it might be but this looks like a essentially going to be a the same thing as lost canyon but instead you're going to set up three different armies now this is really interesting it looks like it's three different players okay you've got this player here then you have a player called rock 888 and then you have a player called rock 77 it looks like you're going to be able to set up three teams from three different players and then you'll have an attack and defense side okay it's still going to function just like canyon in in the way that you have a, a front row and a back row and all that stuff but there's going to definitely be some strategy here you might want your first team to be like all super high burst damage and then the last team be like super tanky so they just can't eat through it by the time they get there they're going to be low on troops and you're going to have like super tanky armies left at the very end who knows but there's going to be a lot of strategy here and you're going to be able to like mix and match these different armies move them around so you could move like number two up to number one or something like that this is going to be cool i'm i'm excited to see how this is going to work but again it is essentially the same fighting style as we see in lost canyon and sunset canyon the last thing i want to mention here is that in this key story ragnar prime seems to be the protagonist but there are two factions right you have the vikings and then you have the anglo-saxons right and so if all players get ragnar for this game mode it doesn't really make sense like like from a lore perspective right like with the key accessory ragnar prime is going to be very strong most likely and very dominant in this game mode but then to turn around and like have the anglo-saxon side be using ragnar prime with his accessory it feels a little bit weird so like are we gonna get possibly and this is just speculation but what if there's a prime commander on the other side right what if the other side gets a prime commander as well they haven't said anything and i i'm doubting it they'll probably just break the immersion and just give everybody ragnar prime but i don't know like it just seems a little weird for them to go all in on ragnar prime and then have it only be 
relevant to half like the one side of this kvk like it, it, why if the kvk is based around vikings invading anglo-saxons why would all why would all camps be able to use ragnar prime right like just from a lore perspective it's a little bit weird but anyway that's just a quick observation uh possibly there's an opportunity there to give a prime to the other side um i doubt it we probably would have heard about it by now but it is what it is okay so that's all the information that we have about the new commander his accessory in the new kvk game mode next let's talk about the new anniversary event that is now live in rise of kingdoms this is an event that you do not want to miss this only comes around once a year there are so many things you can get your hands on here this is a great event for both free to play players and also for players who spend at any level first of all when you first log in you're going to get some number of gems anywhere from like one to 2024 uh just to celebrate the year i got 300 something so i wasn't super lucky but regardless that's your first login and then you also get the seven day login event so each day you're going to get your hands on some free goodies here uh these keys are going to be used for the anniversary shop which we'll talk about in just a second and then on your seventh day you will get to choose a commander that you will get 10 sculptures of from the list of commanders that you already have unlocked okay so if you don't have the commander they're not going to show up here unfortunately but it just is what it is also worth noting obviously Ragnar Prime will not be coming here so don't worry about that don't think about it don't be like oh I'm gonna save till the seventh day maybe Ragnar Prime comes around he won't okay I mean that would be insane if he did but I, I highly doubt it so you can go ahead and pick a commander that you need to get more sculptures of this might be a good chance to get your hands on some of the ranged commanders if you care about range or some of the mightiest governor commanders right that would be my number one recommendation I would say don't go for wheel commanders don't go for like gold key commanders that just doesn't make any sense i would say go for commanders first of all that you need that are meta that would be top priority second priority would be like decent commanders that you could use that are mightiest governor commanders so for example like if you're an archer main this might be a good chance to get your hands on some more ashurbanipal sculptures something along those lines right if you're an infantry main maybe you want your hands on gorgo or if you're a garrison player maybe this is a good chance for you to get your hands on Constantine right Gorgo Constantine is pretty good of course CBO Melianus is going to be here as well the only reason that he's not for me is because I actually do not have him okay so he will be there if you are a rally leader get your hands on him as well he's a mightiest governor commander next is the circus of wonders event very important if you click on this parrot a bunch of times he'll drop some gems I think it's 100 gems something like that I tried clicking around other areas here and I didn't find anything else this parrot doesn't give you anything either taking a look at the different souvenir showcases here um it looks like you can get your hands on a skill reset here if you want which is very cool 51.86 percent chance of that which is nice uh moving upwards here we've got 1.55 percent gets a 30-day gem supply for act three that's really cool I really like that as a souvenir I love that and then the final reward here is a concealed dagger I think this has been the same reward for the past like two or three years but you just get 30 fragments or a full completed concealed dagger for free which is cool next we do have the voyagers log which is a 7k gems event very exciting stuff here this is an event that everybody loves everyone always looks forward to this when it comes around it comes around a few times a year but this is particularly special because it's going to get you some of the currency that you need here for the anniversary shop now there are two pages to this shop over here you can click between the two the first page is where you're going to use the keys and here you can get a bunch of different things of course the most premium things that you can get your hands on here would be probably the legendary commander sculptures the blueprint choice chests for the legs which is exciting we have 10 formation choice chests and five transmutation stones these are probably the most premium from a gameplay perspective of course we do have exclusive uh you know a city decoration and a chat theme these probably won't come back for a while if ever so keep that in mind if you care about cosmetic stuff that's going to be the most premium for you when it comes to like sovereign keys and the gold stars like you don't need this stuff um the equipment materials chest these are random chests they're not pick one chests, and so i probably would avoid those because you have a chance of getting bones which is not very good skill reset first of all if you're a free to player this could be huge for you because some commanders that are good at 5515 you might need some skill resets to get them there okay so this could save you a lot of legendary commander sculptures down the line keep that in mind you probably want to get your hands on the skill reset also for players that want the exhibit coins and this is mainly going to be for players who you know are, are really pushing those museum relics you can get your hands on 500 exhibit coins here which is very nice um probably not a priority because as we've seen historically like 
the museum relics don't typically make old commanders meta right um alexander the great is kind of the only exception there honestly maybe constantine but besides that like these don't usually make or break commanders that make them meta so this is good to get your hands on if you have leftover keys but probably not mandatory unless you are somebody who really needs those coins for whatever reason. Let's say you often run a Tila Takeda into cities, then maybe you would want to get your hands on that if you need them. But besides that, I would try to ignore the rest of the stuff here. You can get all this through regular gameplay, so don't really worry about that. Moving on to the second page of the anniversary shop, this is going to be uh, using the captain's coins. Uh, and this will be in conjunction with you know a lot of these at least will be in conjunction with some number of keys and so if you are a spender in the game then you're probably going to pay a little bit more attention to this page of the anniversary shop now it is worth noting that you can get some of these captain coins for free i think because you get them from desert tracks as well which we'll talk about in just a second but if you want to get large sums of those captain coins you'll probably have to go through desert tracks quite a bit and you could do that through a bundle which we'll talk about in just a second but here you can get the epic city skin which gives you five percent gathering speed pretty good for the off season I think that's a decent pickup it is very expensive here it's worth noting like I mean it's a hundred coins here but um iconic crystal very good to grab this transmutation crystal very premium you definitely want to get your hands on this and the iconic crystal if you can cheaper legendary commander sculptures here you finally you do have the pick one chests for materials which is good transmutation stones are great uh the rest of this stuff you might want to grab the skill reset but besides that not really sure if you need the rest of the stuff here maybe the relic coins or something but yeah really what you want is the transmutation crystal the iconic crystal maybe the city skin if you want that bonus gathering speed if you don't care about that and you have a lot of farms then just skip that it's very expensive anyway and then I would say go for the material chests and the transmutation stones and then last you would go probably for the legendary commander sculptures and the formation choice chests and everything else you can ignore now I mentioned before the desert tracks event which I have done in the past and this is historically a pretty good event if you take a look at the map here you can see a list of all the different rewards that you can get your hands on and it looks like uh every 20 is typically an ideal reward here so every 20 you get to choose 10 sculptures of a legendary commander that you already summoned all right so similar to like the commander that you get for the seven day login event I would prioritize commanders the first that you need and two that you typically can only get from ideas governor because that's just going to be you know it's going to be easy to get that unless you're in some kingdom that fixes it always in your favor but here for 40 you get a legendary uh, material um 60 you get magic lamp which I think blows you through a bunch of different stages here um it's been a year since I've done this event so I forgot but yeah here we have another anniversary uh commander choice chest and this goes all the way up to 660 but this is how you're going to get your hands on a lot of these captain coins which you need for the anniversary shop now there are multiple ways to get these dice first of all you can get 20 of them at a discounted rate for 200 gems each a thousand gems each probably is not worth it uh, at least from what I can tell but the 200 gems probably is I would say but one way you can get your hands on a lot of them is through the master of dunes bundle now this gives you some amount of dice for every purchase and it's also worth noting that we have the captain's wish bundle as well this gives you some of the items that you need to level up the seven day gems event it also gives you some exclusive things like the name plaque and an avatar frame historically this bundle is good if you don't want to grind barbarians and you do want to get the other things that it comes with like speed ups and things like that gold key is not that exciting but the master of dunes event is probably worth getting if you are a mid to high spender uh because these dice are going to get you just a lot of the captain coins for the anniversary shop and also we have the epic glory event where you're going to get a lot of commander sculptures of a commander of your choosing for recharging a certain number of gems so all the way up to 22,000. it's also worth noting that the 400 recharge gets you a skill reset so even if you're a low spender you definitely want to get that at least right i mean recharging 400 gems is like you can do that with the treasure of wisdom for two dollars okay so two dollars you get your hands on a treasure of wisdom and also uh one sculpture of your choosing and a skill reset definitely worth it for a low spender these skill resets are typically pretty hard to come by now again you could pick a commander here from the commanders that you have already summoned so unfortunate that you can't get your hands on a new commander this way but either way I would again pick probably a mightiest governor commander that you would use but prioritize commanders that are actually meta okay and if you want to know what commanders are meta I've made a million videos about that check out the previous videos on the channel great choices here would be Liu Che if you don't have him uh, Zhuge Liang of course 
Herman Prime would be a good one, although I would keep him at 5551 because you don't really need him expertise. Uh, Huo, Joan of Arc Prime, Nevsky, all good choices, of course. And again, skip the gold key commander. Now, this is a good time to remind you guys, no matter which bundle you're purchasing, the best way to do that would be on store.lilith.com slash ROK. This is where you can come in and buy bundles directly through Rise of Kingdoms. And by doing this, you can get your hands on flux coins. So as long as you're buying anything over the $10 flux script bundle, you're going to get your hands on flux coins. These coins can also be used to redeem for bundles later down the line. So literally just buying bundles through this store saves you money down the line. So there's no reason not to do this. This is the best way to buy bundles in rise of kingdoms. The way that this works is again, you go to store.lilith.com slash ROK. You log into your game account. Make sure you choose your main account. If you have multiple, your main character, your main city. Okay. And then when you make the purchases through this shop, it will show up in game as what's called a flux script. And I don't have any in my account at the time of recording this video, but I do have some of my flux coins left over. So I, I do use this system, but basically you will just then use those flux scripts to redeem for whatever bundle you're looking for. Right? So for 499, you would use a 499 flux script, right? So it is, it is a one-to-one perfect translation you redeem the flux script for that bundle and you get the contents of that bundle but again anything over the ten dollar flux script package gets you these bonus flux coins and those can also be redeemed just straight up for bundles all right also if you're wondering how people have the parrot emblem in rise of kingdoms it's from this if you spend fifty dollars or more you unlock the fogsworth avatar okay so keep that in mind that's how you get that moving on there are going to be more events that unlock over the course of the next like 10 days through this anniversary event so so here we have barbarian incursions already live right now. Voyager's log is the seven K gems event. Arms training Lohar is going to come in four days in eight hours. We'll get the fisherman event, which is also going to include another Epic city skin. That one looks really cool, but unfortunately the stats weren't super good for it in two days. We'll get silk road four days. We will get Zenith of power. Most players probably shouldn't push that unless you're a spender, in which case 12% universal defense is very good. And then in six days, we will get tempest clash. Finally, we have the rock yearbook, which I know I'm sure you guys are curious about. So let's go through my yearbook here uh, and we will see sort of my stats for this year for 2024 in rise of kingdoms. Really, it's the last part of 2023 up until September of 2023. But anyway, I sieve changed twice. I waged war for 361 days on August 24th. I set a personal record of power improvement of 7.7 7 million power. Uh, no idea what that was from when did I increase 7.7 .7? is that when I got troops back from my KVK I have no idea I only wiped out 13,000 barbarians and 197 holy guardians which is so funny I literally never kill the holy guardians that's crazy I safely talked about 1.4 million gems and I've gathered resources 3,385 times accumul accumulated 3.2 billion in total mostly gathered gold of course and I literally used more resources than I gathered to increase my power which means I've been opening pack it looks like I trained 3.6 million soldiers with infantry being the primary shout out to infantry gang I fought in 41,000 engagements crushing 107 million enemies under my boots in 15,975 victories looks like I'm a greatest strategist I didn't play arc this year at all all right I'm gonna go with greatest strategist giga chad anyway guys that's gonna do it for today's video if you enjoyed make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there let me know what you think about prime Ragnar and everything associated with him and the new sixth year anniversary events let me know in the comment section below I'd love to hear from you guys and consider subscribing while you're down there clicking the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace